Item number SCP-4640 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-4640-1 currently resides in its home in Makowo, Maui County. Two field agents posing as Mr. and Mrs. Feeks are to care for SCP-4640-1 while attempting to persuade SCP-4640-1 to provide them with SCP-4640-2. These attempts are to be gentle, non-confrontational, and intermittent, to avoid the manifestation of SCP-4640-3. Once per week, agents are to provide reports regarding SCP-4640-1 and its willingness to provide SCP-4640-2. Additional agents are to monitor SCP-4640-1 discreetly to prevent SCP-4640-3 manifestations. Should SCP-4640-1 acknowledge Foundation monitoring, an SK-Class 1 vs. Everyone scenario could ensue. Tests will be conducted in designated Foundation safe spots, where SCP-4640-1 will be taken to by the previously mentioned agents, which will be announced as family and or school trips. All tests have been halted until further notice. Description. SCP-4640 is the collective designation given the two entities currently linked via an anomalous item. Each of these elements have been subclassified as SCP-4640-1 through-3. SCP-4640-1 is Andrew Feeks, an 11-year-old male of native Hawaiian descent. SCP-4640-1 is non-anomalous, however it is the owner of SCP-4640-2. Any attempt to forcibly remove SCP-4640-2 from SCP-4640-1 results in the manifestation of SCP-4640-3. SCP-4640-2 is a yellow circular plastic pen with a stylized purple W. SCP-4640-1 claims that prior to owning it, neither the coloration or W were originally present. As of right now, SCP-4640-2 is attached on the upper left side of a hoodie constantly worn by SCP-4640-1. When SCP-4640-2's current owner is endangered, physically, psychologically, or emotionally, it causes SCP-4640-3 to manifest. SCP-4640-3 is a humanoid entity of muscular build, standing approximately 1.8 meters in height. SCP-4640-3 is dark purple coloration, with a golden W on its chest and yellow pigmentation on its hands, feet, and pelvic area. It is also of note that, despite having the appearance of a human male, SCP-4640-3 did not possess any genitals or intergluteal cleft. SCP-4640-3 goes by the name of Wonder Man, and presents various anomalous abilities characteristic to classical superhero tropes. These have been seen to include Abnormal Strength Abnormal Speed Abnormal Endurance Being impervious to damage Emitting light beams from the eyes at will Amnestic Capabilities Healing individuals through direct skin contact When SCP-4640-3 manifests, it will go through any measures to protect SCP-4640-1, damaging structures and other living beings if necessary. SCP-4640-3 will also use its amnestic abilities on SCP-4640-1 in order to eliminate any traumatic experience. It is theorized that SCP-4640-2's and 3's appearance are based off from SCP-4640-1's ideation of the concept of what a superhero is. However, both aforementioned objects share the branding color scheme of various Dr. Wondertainment products. Research into whether SCP-4640-2 is a Dr. Wondertainment product, or if SCP-4640-1 has previous knowledge of the company is ongoing. Addendum 4640-1 Discovery SCP-4640-3's first recorded sighting occurred in the elementary high school, where it spontaneously manifested after a series of students laughed at SCP-4640-1 when it accidentally dropped its beverage on itself. SCP-4640-3 obligated the other students to apologize, followed up by anesthetizing SCP-4640-1 at the event. 
Foundation response teams were dispatched, amnesticized all witnesses, and then cataloged the occurrence as an extranormal event. A direct link to SCP-4640-1 was not made until July 6, 2018, where it reported, Purple Superhero Saved Child from Deadly Car Accident. The accident involved a gas truck colliding on the lateral side of a car being driven by Mr. and Mrs. Feeks. All individuals involved, excluding SCP-4640-1, died in the event. SCP-4640-3 then amnesticized SCP-4640-1 and took it to a video game store to latter frequency. Addendum 4640-2 Interview Log Interviewee SCP-4640-1 Interviewer Agent Hilla, posing as the elementary school psychiatrist. Forward. The interview was conducted for the purpose of gathering information about SCP 4640 2's origin. SCP 4640 1 was told that it was chosen at random for a psychological evaluation. Begin log. Hi, Andrew. How have you been doing lately? I think I'm doing fine. Why am I here again? Well, because I'm still new around here, so as a way to get to know you all a little better, I'm doing evaluations at random. So don't be scared or surprised if you get called again in the future. Oh. Okay. So what do you think of yourself around here? Are you the nasty trickster that puts thumbtacks in other seats? Or are you the one that likes to make everyone laugh with crazy sayings? I, uh, I guess I'm just the quiet one. Oh, that's totally fine. Not everyone needs a wacky personality. Actually, did you know people who are reserved are usually more intelligent? Really? Well, I'm assuming so. You have such good grades, after all. <laughs> Thanks. I assume you must be a creative person as well. I've heard you like to doodle in your notebooks. I do. Would you like to see some of them? Can I bring my math notebook? That one's got the most drawings. Maybe later, Andrew. I noticed you have a rather interesting pen there, and it made me curious about your personal interest. Is it from a show? It's not. It's a Wonder Man pen. And what's Wonder Man exactly? Never heard that name. He used to be just in my drawings, but since I got the pen, he actually became real. He teleports to me whenever I need him. Is that so? And where did you get it? I mean, who wouldn't want a personal superhero? I'd like one too. It came inside a plastic box in his weird cereal mom once bought. It was delicious, but she says she can't find more of it. My favorite part were the marshmallows. I'm pretty sure they changed in color every time you close and open your eyes, but mom told me she could only see them blue. Perhaps she went to a store she normally doesn't go to? I don't know. She never told me. Hey, isn't it weird she was the only one that bought the cereal? There's normally more boxes behind the ones you first see. It does sound pretty weird. Maybe the cereal got discontinued or something. Oh, would you look at the time? It's almost recess. Let's finish this chat for now. I'll see when we can meet together again. I got really curious about this Wonder Man you mentioned. You're free to leave now. Okay, thanks. Bye, Miss Liancy. Bye, Andrew. End log. Closing Statement Investigation into all supermarkets located near SCP-4640-1's residence has revealed that no personnel or written records evidence the existence of a serial advertising the described features. However, security footage of Mrs. Feeks analyzing in a confused manner a Honey Nut Cheerio cereal box and then adding it to the shopping cart was found in. Whether this footage has any relevance is still being debated. Addendum 4640-3 Testing Log The following is a series of failed attempts at attaining SCP-4640-2. This list has been recently abridged. Consult Dr. Okoa for the complete testing log. Test Number 1 Procedures Agent Killowa and Gersh, posing as SCP-4640-1 parents, attempt to acquire SCP-4640-2 while it's asleep. Results. SCP-4640-1 is seen with SCP-4640-2 now attached to its pajamas. When attempting to remove the object, SCP-4640-3 manifested. The entity raised its right index finger up to its mouth and shushed at the agents until they left the room. Attempts at re-entering the room were met with SCP-4640-3 re-manifesting and repeating the process. Test Number 5 Procedures 
Agent Foros poses as a substitute teacher and attempts to confiscate SCP-4640-2 from SCP-4640-1. Results: SCP-4640-1 responded by taking SCP-4640-2 from its hoodie and placing it inside its pocket, apologizing for wearing the object. Test number 6. Procedures. Follow up the previous test. Agent Foros demands SCP-4640-1 to give her SCP-4640-2. Results: SCP-4640-1 reacts with fear, resulting in SCP-4640-3 manifesting. The entity then tells Agent Foros to apologize, followed by the agent being forced verbally to sit at a corner of the class. SCP-4640-3 watched over the agent to prevent her from getting up until the school day was over. Test number 9. Procedures. An individual named Robert Frow, allegedly SCP-4640-1's best friend, is paid $10 in order for him to ask SCP-4640-1 if he can borrow SCP-4640-2. Results. SCP-4640-1 responded with a no without further comment. Test number 10. Procedures. Frau is told to use his $10 to buy SCP-4640-2 from SCP-4640-1. Results. SCP-4640-1 explicitly told Robert to get away from him. Test number 16. Procedures. Agent McKelson, posing as a clerk at a grocery store SCP-4640-1 often visits, attempts to convince SCP-4640-1 to give him SCP-4640-2 in exchange for any confectionery of his liking. Results. SCP-4640-1 turns down the offer, indicating SCP-4640-2 is more valuable than candy. Despite no danger or offense towards SCP-4640-1 having been made, SCP-4640-3 still manifested, adding to the former's comment that eating too much sugar is bad for SCP-4640-1's health anyways. The entity then gestured a thumbs up towards SCP-4640-1, which responded in the same manner. Test number 23. Procedures. Agents Killawa and Gersh walk with SCP-4640-1 towards an alleyway, where a staged mugging act, with D-9022 being the thief, will occur. Results: SCP-4640-3 manifested and punched D-9022 in the face, breaking its nose. D-9022 was rendered unconscious. SCP-4640-3 then turns to face SCP-4640-1, exclaims the phrase, I'm the Wonder Man, in a lower-pitched voice followed by its demanifestation. Medical examination on D-9022 revealed minor skull fractures in its front and back side. These appear to originate from the initial punch at its face and the subsequent impact with the ground. Test number 30. Procedures. D-9023 is instructed to walk unsuspiciously towards SCP-4640-1 and then steal SCP-4640-2 as fast as possible. Results. SCP-4640-3 manifested while D-9023 was at a meter distance from SCP-4640-1. It then grabbed D-9023 by the collar, stared at it in an intimidating manner, and then threw it on the floor with excessive force. This resulted in various burst fractures along D-9023's spine. Test number 31. Procedures. D-9024 is instructed to walk unsuspiciously behind SCP-4640-1 and then knock it unconscious with the given baseball bat. Results. SCP-4640-3 manifests the moment the baseball bat makes contact with SCP-4640-1's head. SCP-4640-3 then takes the bat and breaks it in half, followed by SCP-4640-3 throwing the broken bat pieces at D-9023 with enough force as to have broken two of its ribs. SCP-4640-3 then turns to SCP-4640-1, heals it via anomalous means, and then anesthetizes it of the event. Test Number 32 Procedures D-9025 is told to incapacitate SCP-4640-1 via shooting one of its legs from an area SCP-4640-1 does not have visibility of. Result: 
SCP-4640-3 manifested when the fired bullet was ten meters short of connecting with its target. The bullet ricocheted off when making contact with the entity, damaging a nearby building. SCP-4640-3 then redirected its line of sight towards D-9025 and fired a laser at its location, effectively killing D-9025. After a few seconds, SCP-4640-3 turns towards one of the hidden cameras recording the test and stares at it for a total of five minutes before attending SCP-4640-1 and demanifesting. Addendum 4640-4 Incident Log on January 15, 2018, SCP-4640-1 started experiencing a nightmare involving itself being pursued by a multitude of characters originating from various cartoon shows it watches. This resulted in SCP-4640-3 manifesting at seemingly random locations in an approximate radius of 6.5 km from SCP-4640-1. The entity acted as if it were in combat with said characters, often using its anomalous capabilities to defend SCP-4640-1. In said attempts to defend SCP-4640-1, SCP-4640-3 displayed a large quantity of previously unknown abnormal abilities, some of which include flight, spontaneous generation of control over fire, spontaneous generation of control over electricity, generation of ice particles via exhaling, manifestation of solid translucent barriers, self-duplication, short-range teleportation. This resulted in the destruction of multiple buildings, with a total death count of and injured. The rest of the surrounding populace at this point had woken up, most of which sought shelter while the remaining few attempted to record the event. Despite an additional SCP-4640-3 instance preventing the commotion from interrupting SCP-4640-1's sleep, Agents Killawa and Gersh managed to successfully wake up SCP-4640-1, resulting in the immediate demanifestation of all SCP-4640-3 instances. Airborne amnestics were released, and a fake memory of an earthquake was implanted. All recorded evidence of the event was destroyed with copies currently being stored in the video archives.